Hello, how's it going? Soul Tire here. Welcome to my new Let's Play. And this one, I'll be playing the 4.0 Beta, which is the latest upgrade for Rome Total Realism 8, which has just been released. For anyone who would like to play it, and I uh, recommend that you do, I will leave a link in the description below that will take you to the download page, where you'll also find the install instructions and uh, there'll be a credit list there too um, with a detail of the contributors to this mod uh, for many sort of like old Ro Rome Total Warriors you'll probably recognize several of the modders now also on that page there is two other links one will take you to the screenshots which uh, where some members have posted uh, obviously screenshots of their uh, factions and their units not all of them that are in the mod but certainly quite a number of them there's also a documentation link now this will take you a page that's been painstakingly composed and well written by a howley 11 the uh, mod leader and it's not long-winded but I, I, and I do suggest that you read it. Um, for new and experienced players alike, it will certainly help you with your gameplay. It will tell you about the new features that are involved uh, in the mod, which are to do with like the economy, recruitment, culture, the map, and it's all, also an insight to each and every faction and um, a little pointer to what what part the um, rebels play in this as well because they, they ain't weak ones in this one they do have a role to play and they will attack your settlements they will also be able to recruit the same sort of units that you have depending on the the area of recruitment they're in and um, they're just like another faction you have to overcome um, so with that said, um, I'd like to thank uh, Ahel, the mod leader, and Eurosius, who is the head of PR, and also a modder, band player, when well, he plays in a band, and um, become a friend of mine too. I'd like to thank them both for inviting me in to be part of the team. I've enjoyed my time here, and I've made a few new acquaintances, and... Um, we've had some good banter but um, the important thing was that I actually got to see how these guys communicate in the chat room and stuff like that and the things they talk about and I can honestly say it's quite remarkable that the depth of research and the attention to detail that's gone into this mod is a little bit different from most mods you'll see it does hold on to the vanilla feel which is something I like personally and um, a lot of long hours were put into bringing this mod to where it is now. So, again, it was an eye-opener for me. I've worked in a couple of mods before doing testing, but this actually took it a step higher up the ladder, I think. Just um, what, everything that was done t t to make this mod what it is. All right, so with that said, I think it's time to move on to the let's play itself and i'm going to play as uh, german tribes i'll just quickly scroll through the description here and you can pause it and read it in your own time now i know i've done this already with um my faction my short faction preview but as i'm playing as this faction this time um i'll just go through it and that said, you can pause it and read it if you want. If that appeals to you. Now, um, I'm only going to play a short campaign. Um, the main idea is to put this out into the public domain. Now, I know I'm only a small channel, but you know, if I can help promote it in, in my small way, then that can only be a good thing. Uh, I hope a lot of viewers who watch my let's play will go and play it and support the mod because it is quite um, an amazing piece of work. Um, I'll 
play with no advice, uh, definitely no battle limit because I never do. I always manage all my settlements, I never play arcade battles and uh, I never follow the AI characters. I've given all reasons for this before in my previous Let's Plays. Um, basically, um, I just don't like to use them, I prefer to do things my way. Now, Ahil, the um, mod leader, has asked me to play this Let's Play on uh, hard and uh, hard campaign, which is recommended, and hard battle difficulty, which is also recommended. And I think that his reasoning behind that is to um, to try and show the balance of the mod. It's quite difficult as it is. You know, it's a tough task even on this level, because of the way the mod starts. It's a slow build up of your economy, economy, uh, build up of your settlements. You can't do it quickly. It all takes time which is pretty much the way they try to capture the historical realism of the time, which you see starts in 270 BC. Now, I mean, normally I would play on very hard, very hard. I have attempted some of my testing on that, on very hard difficulty, and uh, cricket was tough. And um, certainly you'll find this a challenging enough campaign playing on the recommended hard difficulty. So with that said, um, I think we'll move on to the battle map. It's sort of the campaign map. Now something went wrong there and I'm not quite sure what it is. I seem to have lost some sound. Anyway, while I'm here, I, uh, another thought just came to my mind was uh, I have to thank one of our members, Lanjin, uh, for making my Let's Play thumbnail for this particular campaign. Cheers, buddy. Okay, now, it's, the Germans start off, they're pretty a pretty poor um, nation. Um, now the first thing you got to do is click on a settlement. You'll see the advisor come up in the corner here and you click on that to start your background script. Now the, every restart of your save game you must do that or else you will corrupt the script. Now the main income for the likes of the Germanic tribes came from the land, from farming and um, herds of cattle and, and um, horses, etc. So I will concentrate on trying to get that in motion to build up our economy and then I'll sort of turn to the infrastructure a little bit and then uh, hopefully I'll be positioned then to start recruiting. Now, like I say, I have tested it on the Germans before. I did a couple of months ago. I can't remember everything I've seen, but I did about 30 turns of it. And um, something that came to notice was to do what I'm going to do now, and that is uh, build a cattle breeder in each settlement. It gives you a tax income bonus of 15%. It's not a penalty because there's no minus there. And um, you'll find that your population growth is very low, is at 0.5%. So, a lot of players, including myself, very often, we, if, if, if the public order's good, we whack up the taxes, don't we, to very high. Uh, but I won't be doing that in this Let's Play, and I suggest that um, that you don't do it either, because as long as you get population growth, population means more taxes, and more taxes means more money and more money means you can build and recruit. So it's a no-brainer in my book. And um, to do it any other way is pretty much counterproductive. As you can see, Trevor here has a public order of 165%, and we could whack up the taxes to very high. It'll take us into minus 0.5% uh, population growth. Now, we've only got 700 households in there, so we don't want it dropping. Obviously, you want it to increase, and as I said, more population means more tax. 
Um, I'll do the same here, I'll build the cattle breeder and then our miss here, again we could do it similar here but population grows at 0.5% so I'll leave it as it is and I'll build a cattle breeder here. Okay, so that leaves us a little bit of money left anyway. Now I'll come back to Lupia, which is our capital, and I'm going to recruit the strongest unit I can, which is the Germanic Infantry. Um, you don't start with many units, as you can see, this is Arminius, the faction leader, and over here you have Ethelric, which is the faction there. He's only got a couple of units, so what I'll do is I'll bring him across to the capital. And then he'll join Move. up with um, his, the faction leader here. Now I'm going to put Move. back into the settlement, so you know, maybe not encourage anyone to attack us just yet. Now, hopefully they'll make it back to uh, make it across rather to the capital. Now, oh no, don't want that. Want the settlement? Now you'll notice that all the settlements haven't got any protection around them. Um, the wooden palisade here. Now I'm going to leave that for a couple of turns because I noticed, like I say, I've got the advantage of having played uh, a test program with us and you don't get attacked for several turns, you know, I can't remember now, four or five, six, whatever. So you can hold off building the palisade until you get, you, you know, it's th this built and certainly the upgrades to this in each settlement and that gives your economy a decent boost and you're going to need that money. So that's how I'll play it. If you watch me, you'll see what I do anyway. Now, I've recruited, like I say, we haven't got a big army, but we need strong units to start with because we're going to have to get out there and conquer as quickly as we can before, you know, anyone else starts seeing sort of like transgress on our territory. The goals are quite far away. There's several tribes in between us and them, and the same with the Romans. Uh, they've got the Alps across and several settlements on the way to our territory. So what I'll do is, well, what I aim to do is to take this settlement here, Lassiburgium, and there's another one up here which we can't see because it's out of the um, line of sight. Okay, now the chances are that um, one of the rebel factions that, like I said before, they're not all, they're not just wild rebels, these are actually tribes that we could have been used to make up part of the Germanic tribes or the Gaul tribes, but the way they've made this mod is quite different from many other mods, that all these little rebel um, tribes that you come across are all independents, they're all independent factions, but they're unplayable, so it does make for a much more challenging campaign in my opinion and a more interesting one too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recruit a unit of, uh, let's see, cheap one, slingers, just to give us numbers in there and hopefully that might just uh, defer any attack from any of the local tribes. Uh, you've got to remember there's no modern technology uh, or they're, they're all sort of like behind everybody else and technology wise up in this area like behind the Romans and the Greeks etc so yeah it's all pretty basic and um, yeah you have to fight pretty raw so I'll do the same up here I've got um, Godric the German I'll leave him in there again because it's pretty isolated up there he's got a unit of Germanic skirm skirmishers and I think I'll give him a unit of slingers in there as well okay because they are both on the front line sort of thing with to, and our capital is a bit further back uh, from many attacks from any of the rebel um, little uh, villages and whatnot around this area. And besides that, I'm going to have my main body of armor, uh, army over here too. All right, I hope that's explained enough for you. Um, with that, let's move on to the end turn. Aha, uh -huh. looks like we're getting a little visit. No, 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 I haven't come over the border. Okay, that's fine. Let's have a look here. Now, this is a Langobardi, and this guy's name is Sibert of the Teutones, and he's a general. Obviously, just came out to give his 
bodyguard a little bit of exercise. Stem with this here, this is uh, Manfred of the Ruge, he's a general, and uh, they've pro sort of done this. I don't think they'll attack us, that's for sure. Lord. Especially after they put uh, Ethelric in to sell him. Okay, so we're done there. Um, let's go and see what else we can do now. We'll up the upgrade the cattle debris for this um, subsistence herds. And as you can see here, this gives you a population growth bonus of 0.5% and a communal farm and farming tax income bonus of 30%. Now you can, you know, now you can see why I've gone this route. Um, because that will help again with population and also with our income. We can get another one there at Trevor and another one at Armisia. Now they take four turn, turns, so in between that time, we're going to have to look at taking a settlement. Uh, and obviously, the first target will be Lancer uh, Burgium here. But I want to wait till this general moves out the way or. Maybe I'll move back in. What's his name again? Sibert. Have they got one in there? I don't know if we'll be able to see or not. No, but they've got half a dozen units in there. And, um, you know, I'm not, bu I'm, I'm, well, not going to bullshit you. Um, I did play a battle out. I did attack that as my first when I was testing. And I did manage to win, but it wasn't as easy as what I thought it would be. They're quite tough. And plus the fact that you're not. Your own arm isn't particularly strong with no experience and no upgrades, as you can see. Okay, uh, let's have a quick look at the news. Uh, the Antigonids and the Galatians are having a ceasefire. It doesn't affect me, so I'm not interested. That's our recruitment. That's our cattle breeders uh, finished being building. And our end of turn report, which gave us 2,600, which we've spent the most of. Right then, so let's move on to the end turn yet again. Now hopefully they'll move away and we'll get straight in and attack that settlement. And that'll give us a nice little battle. End turn report says 980, so as you can see, we, we do have to take it. Now I'm going to take my full force, except for one unit, because we will need them. As you can see, we've got berserkers here, and I'll talk about them once we get down onto the battlefield. So we'll take all yes. these guys General. bar General. one and um what's that? Them. Besieging settlement. Okay, alright, so that other general is buggered off somewhere else. And we've got Saint Win I think you pronounce that. Maybe it's Kent Wayne, I don't know. Of the Teutonies. But um he's in charge. He's a governor and um, he's got, let me see, five units there. He's got a couple of units of uh, Cheruske warriors, um, a unit of light carv, I think they're jav carv, yeah, they are. They've got some Germanic skirmishes and uh, Germanic spearmen. But these Cheruske warriors, um, again, there's many factions, uh, sorry, there's many units like this. Uh, included in into this mod that you may not have seen before okay so it's a it's not an easy task but i'm pretty confident i want it again <laughs> let's get down onto the battle map again it's another thing i've got to be careful about is not taking too many casualties now i will be able to retrain any 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 that I do have um, and recover them but again it eats into your economy and you have to be quite frugal with with how you start um, it is a slow a little bit of a slow process Battle but it's immersive an and it's certainly worth What's it and it certainly adds to the enjoyment of the mod okay let's start our deployment after our man has finished his speech Warriors. Take up the sword and the axe, the bow and the knife. We come for glory and honor. Okay. No, don't know what happened there. Went round the back for some reason. 
Uh, right, we'll start off with my skirmishers. I'll put them just out over here. I'm going to bring them out a loose formation, of course. Um, and then my three units of uh, Germanic uh, infantry. I'll just put them a pretty basic tactic, a line, a straight line tactic. Now, the berserkers I was talking about. Now, although they inflict massive damage on the en uh, the enemy, they do have a tendency to take a lot of casualties. Now, at the moment, these guys aren't uh, re retrainable, and those that get killed stay. No, those that get well, they don't get wounded. Put it that way, they get killed. There's no recovery. You don't get any sort of like you know recovering troops like you do with the other fa or the other units. So what I'll do is I'm going to keep them out of the fray for as long as possible because the other thing about them is of course is the berserkers, they go into that crazy mode and you lose control over them, they just do their own thing and, and, and that's, most, that, that's the main reason why they probably get so many casualties. But what I'm going to do with them is I'll keep the main body here and we'll attack this entrance and I'm going to send them down the, down the left flank here to come in from another entrance and then let them join the fray once we reach the uh, central square. Now I'll bring these uh, skirmishers over here and we'll put this General Helfrich here because uh, he's got the second largest amount of uh, uh, troops, second largest amount of men. And he's got the least amount. I'll keep him close by there. Actually, I'm, I'm going to switch the general to this side. Uh, oh, he's not a general. This is a warlord, isn't he? Now, Aho also asked me to use Hughes numbers, and um, I very rarely ever use Hughes numbers in my setup because I always find it causes a lot of um, well, it exaggerates pathfinding problems that every mod seems to have. And, and it also can contribute towards, you know, having lag issues as well. Um, although I don't, I'm quite fortunate, I don't really get much lag. But um, what I've done is I've, I've uh, instead of um, having the huge units, I've gone into preferences and I've changed the number where 80 is a, is a, large, is a large unit, 160 is a huge unit. And I've made a compromise and gone in the middle with 120. So, uh, there you go, I know you'll probably watch this. Uh, I made the compromise. I don't like playing with these units, but for you, I've done it. I've done a little bit of something. All right, so um, after that, uh, a little bit of uh, information. Let's, oh, one other thing uh, uh, before I move on to the attack. Um, you'll notice here the, the generals have a skirmish mode. Now, uh, they, uh, I understand uh, uh, that the reason behind that is to protect generals when you involve the AI so that they don't go charging into pointy, thing, pointy things and get themselves sort of like embedded on a, on a spike somewhere on a spear. <laughs> all right? So we all know that they charge in and get, just get themselves, commit suicide charge. You know what I'm talking about. And, um, that's why that's there, protect your general, protect the, but mainly I think it's to protect the, the AI generals. Now, me in particular, I don't like using them, and if I remember, I always switch it off, because I, I don't want them, I'll control them myself, if I want them to run away, um, then I'll be fully responsible for um, getting them out of a dire situation. Okay, so there we go. Let's just do the other two. Right then, I mean you put them on sort of guard mode if you like, you know I mean, but you generally just do that when they're in melee. Again, I'm not the greatest um, player in the world, and um, I often forget these things and um, basically maybe I'm just not clever enough to remember, you know, but there you go, that's the way it is. It is what it is, and um, I don't really give a toss when anybody thinks about it. Right. Let's get these guys on guard mode. I dare say they'll come out and attack us. 
and they have so we send you that way you support them you there you there we'll set the um, berserkers off in that area I keep calling them skirmishers for some reason uh, I don't know why I do that there's skirmishers there talking of which you go for them you attack them let's get them sandwiched as a, a famous or a well-known YouTuber, Let's Player calls it, horse sandwich. What's that? Australian guy it tends to swear an awful lot. Christ, he swears a lot more than I do. Huh. Alright, get them wiped out, boys. Take care of them. Take your more skirmish mode and we'll send you over. Oh, come on, man. Wipe them out. guys over there. We'll bring you in behind here. General to the flank there. Let's get you skirmishers down there. Okay guys, just uh, just charge without firing lads. I don't want you doing that. You guys get down there. Yeah, you've got them to charge without um, using the missiles. Um, if you don't know how to do that, you just hold down your alt, your alt key and it won't do it. It makes them charge without um, using them. Okay, guys. Put your skirmish. And you can attack in there. Right there, I didn't want you in there actually. Oh, I wanted you running down the. Um, the router. There's another little trick I use where I click behind the unit I'm fighting. It just makes them engage better. Oh, they've run out of um, javelin, so you might as well attack them in the back. Who are we doing up here? I haven't quite won this yet, have we? Alright General, give them a smash into the, into the side there. And then back out you are. Oh they're broken, run them down. And you run them down as well, let's just make sure they don't escape. And we'll bring you up here, we've lost a few already as you can see. How are we doing here? We should have them beaten by now. Where have they got left? They've still got 63 left. Or is that mine? Germanic Spearman, 63. Crikey, mate. Getting general over there. Need to run, mate. Wiping them out already, it's just putting behind them a little bit more. Want to wipe them out so they can't reform. Skirmishers didn't lose too many, uh, didn't take too many casualties fight, casualties fight now, so maybe we might be alright. Now, what have they got here? Light cavalry, let's see if we can get in amongst them and kill them. Let's 
seem to have broken up into two units, these cavalry. These missile cars. Here comes their, their warlord. We'll draw back. Let's go get them. Get you up there behind them if we can. Oh, very slow to react, I'm afraid. Uh, I understand that. Uh, something I have noticed in, in this uh, mod right enough is the the speed, the, the animation speed, uh, especially for the enemy, the AI. But your own men don't seem to. I don't know. Maybe it's just. Um, just me, I'm looking at it properly, I don't know. But sometimes it seems a very quick speed up of animation, like triple speed sort of thing, without actually doing it yourself. Right, now we Enemy warlord see shows his worth. Stuff. Nothing! Any of our warriors would die rather than run! Javelins, get them! How the hell did he get away there? Not too worried. Let's get all the men in there. We'll bring over these guys here. And this general here. Keep saying generals, don't I? They're warlords. Alright, I think we'll send you around there. And you, the our warlord leader, around there. Guard this area. Guard. Quickly, forward. I'm waiting for them to come and attack us, that's what I'm hoping. Watching. Quickly, march. Who's uh boys doing? They've reached the point where I wanted them to. Right now, we're just gonna leave you there for now. Put you on guard in case you get attacked. Come on. I want these missile carved to charge. But I don't want as if they're going to. Alright, let's send you round there. We should fatigue like exhausted. Yeah, they're fatigued. Exhausted. Um, 105 and that, 119 there. We'll just speed it up a little bit and get them round. Whoops. Exhausted. This is just um, a little bit of distraction. Okay, if we put you. No, it's the wrong one. Let's put you there. And the uh, larger unit here. And we'll put you in there behind there to help them. Um, and we'll get a carve ready. March. Hurry, march. We'll send you around the back here to distract this lot. We'll bring uh, berserkers up there fresh. And just hang in there, baby. And general. let's get our general up here ready. Move out, march! Units! 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 Move out! Now, I'm hoping they'll fire it well. Go on, go on. Yeah! We're under attack! And this is what I was hoping for. Rally call from our warlord. That's him done. And out you come, boys. Back out, back out, back out, 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 out. They're spearmen. They're going to cause you problems. They're ready. So let's get ourselves on to 
One here. And one here. I'm being quite meticulous for this. You can take out their general, it's only him on his own. Maybe the javelins will do the trick. Oh, look at this. I don't want... I don't want them fighting them churuskis yet. Run away boys, go on. We take too many casualties. And we can't send them to attack that general because once they're finished with him, they're just going to attack into the back of these churuskis and we're not ready for that. Get my chieftain up there. Come on. Should have enough javelins to kill him. Not even fire them. Tank him instead. I'll let the berserkers wipe him out. Got a rally cry from our warlord, our chieftain. Okay, Mr. General, let's see how you deal with them um, berserkers. Shouldn't last too long, I'd imagine, unless he can run away. Oh, shut up. Behave yourself. Ah, oh, they're gonna charge into the back up there, are they? Come on. Well, how much longer is it gonna last? There he goes. Enemy warlord is dead, Not before time either. By your brave warriors. Now they'll just run into the, 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 the rest of the battle there. Can you imagine? I've lost a whole unit with demonic light infantry. No, I honestly didn't expect that. Um, I don't know, it doesn't seem like the, the game mechanic is totally kicking in the way it's supposed to do. The berserkers haven't made a move. And there's still all these Cherusky warriors here, so... But I've lost too many men to be honest with you. Uh, this is a poor show by me. Oh, it sort of depicts just how tough this this is. This is only beginning. But I, 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 I don't understand why they're not actually uh, joining in. Come on. Are they exhausted? Yeah, they're exhausted. Maybe that's it. Let's get in there and wait in Churuski there. Did a lot of damage to my man. Well, that's a lot worse than what I expected. Charge him general to hell with it. Don't like risking him either. No, they, they haven't even done anything. Look. Still 36 of these Cheruskis. Christ, these are tough, aren't they? Oh, 
Well, this is a lot tougher than what I remember the, the last time, I can assure you. Victory this is no longer a battle, this is a hunt. No, a coward chase. Well, maybe that'll give you a, a little indication of what you're up against when you play this. Um, so it might not be an idea, a good idea to play it on very hard battle, eh? Okay? Uh, this is how hard that, uh, well, how tough I found it on very hard. I, I didn't expect it to be as, as clo close as this. Although I could have done the battle a lot better. This there. is a great victory. The cries of dying um, enemies are sweet music well, to our warrior. Well, it is, you know. Um, I'm not the greatest player, as I said. 360 men we lost. Let's see how many we can get back. Uh, 47, 130, 140, 165 roughly. So about almost half my men. I've lost about 200, Jesus. Oh well, <laughs> shit happens sometimes. And I'm wondering, I think I'm able to recruit those Cheruski warriors. For, uh, I think you can recruit certain of these tribal um, units from the, depending on the Settlement area of recruitment, you know, if, if, or probably from the settlement that you um, take over. Uh, we'll occupy this, obviously, and straight away we'll get the cattle breeder in there. Leave the tax where it is. Public order is very high, 185%, which is good. Shield bearer, uh, retinue expanding for our leader. Um, what age is he? 61, okay. Uh, Tilde bear, we'll leave you in charge there. Uh, what's this? A bard gives plus one for influence, all right, we'll pass that on to Childebert, he's going to hold that settlement. And we'll take all these and give them to Ethelric. Give the retinues to him, because I don't imagine the, our faction leader is going to last too much longer. Can we get him back to Lapia? Right, we'll do that. Prepare to ambush. Okay, just get rid of that lot there. I just have a quick look around the other settlements. Everything looks okay and in order. And uh, right, fine, I'll leave it there. So thanks for watching. I hope you were entertained by um, my gameplay, my ramblings, and um, most of all, my enthusiasm for this this particular mod. All the best.